And welcome into the program. This is Cosmic Kool-Aid, Episode 3. I'm your host, Corey Short. And in the booth with me today, we have none other than the honky-tonk Willy Wonka himself. <laughs> Mr. Jason Ward is in the building from Trinity Farms, the man sponsor in this show. Big title to live up to. Welcome to the show, sir. <laughs> Thank you for having me. So glad to have you here, man. Oh man, glad to be here. So let's start by let's start by paying the bills and uh, let, let's let's spend the first few minutes telling our audience about Trinity Farms and what you guys provide to the community and, and some of your products. And, I brought uh, a lot of those, and you know, you're welcome to uh, indulge in some. Okay, but uh, we started in 2018, 2000, or probably early two or late 2017, going into 2018. My cousin and I, we uh, working out together, going to the gym, and uh, you know, it's right after the the pilot program turned to more of the farm bill, which was passed in 2018. Um, so that's the the North Carolina hemp. That's pilot the federal. Program. The okay. fe- yeah, the the pilot program led up to to 2018, and then that kind of changed into a federal law. Okay. And then uh, you know my cousin Bobby, uh, great business partner, but you know one of the you know my favorites all my life. We uh, you know working out together, and uh, I had been I had been in Ingles for forever, and just kind of looking for something else, and <clears throat> he. Uh, he asked if I had been, you know, heard about this CBD thing, and I was, I was like, yeah, you know, a little bit, but I, at the time, it was it was weed, and it was there was no, you know, the CBD side was kind of so new, so we got to my dad had passed away with uh, pancreatic cancer, uh, not not too far before that, so we never got that opportunity to kind of pass that gift of of cannabis and the plant, you know, onto him, uh, so we started doing research, man, and I I fell in love. Um, I'm, I wasn't really that business end guy, you know, being in the corporate world, kind of nine to five, getting your check by paycheck, you know, every, it wasn't my, my forte. It wasn't my wheel. So, but you know, he's a very good business guy and, um, so started meeting these connections and he had some big connections in the, in the industry early on. And, uh, we just started putting it together. It, it, it's the, from where it's it was and where it is now, the the vision for it was kind of totally different. We didn't, we wanted to kind of come into the thing, whole thing as like a, a distributor for a lot of other a lot of other people. You know, we didn't really look at it. It was going to be Asheville Hemp Supply, and that's still our LLC. But um, it really never was going to be what it is now. But as the you know it started progressing and we got to touch more and more people's lives, it just kind of we got in Black Mountain. That was kind of the first thing. It turned out from going to be a kind of a warehouse type thing to to put in the middle of Black Mountain. We were the first CBD store at the at the time. Right. Or you know it, it, that that was in Black Mountain. Um, and just the stories, man, and like being able to touch people's lives and being being just a part of the community. We we learned fast that you know we got something good and can be a part of the community and really change lives. Sure. Well, I uh, I got into that business early on. Yeah, uh, I with, a, with a warehouse uh, grow, and me and a few partners were were uh, attempting that, and uh, I realized real quickly that I am no farmer, <laughs> right? And uh, that business wasn't for me. But I can tell, you know, one of the the first things I notice about your store and your product is uh, the look is so gourmet and so aesthetically pleasing. All your packaging, your store itself, everything is just top notch. And uh, it really kind of takes the stink out of people just coming into the industry. Right. You know, so if they want to try something, they see this clearly top-notch company that takes pride in quality. And, and uh, to, to look that pleasing must mean they care about their product. Yeah, well, that was something early on that we that we put a lot into. We put a lot of time. We put a lot of effort and money into this. Packaging is one of the most expensive things that, that you can do when you're marketed and your look. Uh, that's not all about that, but... We wanted to make sure that we did have a product. Like if you were trying this product for the first time, it didn't look like a head shop or it didn't look like something. It was more apothecary that you could you could go into. And, uh, you know, I, I think you got to trust the product, the, the way the product looks first. I know I do. But then, uh, you know, we want our quality from, from what's on the outside all the way to the inside and the love that's put in it. So now Who does the design of the packaging? Is you that know, you? No, that, Bobby come up with that tree. And uh, we just kind of rolled on it from there. There was actually a girl that worked, uh, he owns a gas stations, and there was a girl that owned the gas, or that worked at the gas station 
that drew the logo. So, you know, we've had people involved in this from it, just from the, the bottom to the top, you know, just in, people that we know. And Sure. Talk to me about where we're at in the legalization process. Like, so, you know, there was Delta 8 that came on last year and now Delta 9. It, there's these new Delta 9 variants. Tell me about that. Yeah, man, it's uh, something new every day. This business changes every single day. Like if you're not if you're not on top of it and you're not you're not paying attention, it uh, it just happens so fast. I mean, with our first, I guess, until about two thousand, maybe twenty twenty. You know, kind of we didn't get into the Delta Eight game until later on. Like it was like, uh, I don't know, this is a sketch. And the first time that I ever tried a, a Delta Eight product that that it just came in the door. I tried it and I just got this headache. I'm like, man, this just doesn't feel right. It wasn't our product. We were just still in the CBD game. And um, I, I, I've tried it. It's like it just didn't sit right. It was like it was missing some kind of cannabinoid or atom or <laughs> something just wasn't right. It just didn't feel natural. But uh, as the industries went on and processing's, it, you know, gotten better and uh, it it's 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 just an unreal product. There's so much out there. Now we're into the THCA. Um, that's huge, huge seller for us right now. And um, how long do you anticipate till there's full legalization? That's so hard to tell. I mean, every time something comes on the table, it gets wiped off in the middle of the night. And to be 100 percent honest with you, if if we have to go with some of the 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 bills that they've they've propose and try to pass it's not good for the business it's not good for anybody it's it's ba- the consumer's really not going to care but it would mostly be um abc alcoholic beverage commission or whatever on with cannabis big cannabis all over it so they're that for a while they had a bill that uh, a proposal that they wanted a uh the the grower for north carolina would have to be a, a grower in a legal state for five years that automatically wipes out everybody that started in the pilot program and, and all that. So now I don't, I'm not super political, so forgive me for this, but it is, is it, is it the right or the left that's going to be more likely to legalize this? You know, it, I, I have no idea and I'm <laughs> with you. I don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't, I, I swear it's like WWE. They get, you know, they, they go back and forth and then they get in the ring and they pretend like they, they hate each other. But whoever's going to benefit they go, whoever's gonna, time, Whoever right. is going to 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 have that that political say and gets that money, I think that's where it's going to be. But that's just my opinion. I, you know, sure. I've, I've kind of, I've, I, I keep an eye on it, but only at a little bit. If you're looking at it every day and you're like, okay, they're going to change something that's going to take your business away, you tend to keep an eye on it, but try not to let it consume you. Sure. Because there's been bills on the table before that we would have been shut down the next day. Okay. So I, I, I know that you are a man of character and integrity, and, and so that I know that you would only want to sell things that are helping people. Right. So with that in mind, is there anyone out there that should avoid the products? Uh, we, we're not medical professionals, and we say this from the time you come in the store to the time you leave. Always talk to your doctor. I mean, it, it, we're, we're, we're not medical professionals, but I will say that I wish— I wish I could tell the stories that we've seen happen. Um, I mean, I guess we could in, in in a way, but we can't advertise that and put it out there just because, you know, we're it we're, it kind of goes against the. I understand. Yeah, but I understand. So, man, I, if we could just talk about what what it's. Well, done I'll tell people. my story. I mean, shit. Four years ago, I couldn't sleep at all. Right. I hadn't dabbled with with cannabis at all my whole life. Just a very little bit in college, but. I couldn't sleep at all. And one of my buddies brought me a cookie. I don't even know if it was Delta 8, Delta, I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. But he made these cookies, and it was incredible for sleep. And I've been a fan of your products, and those like it ever since. Right. Um, I mean, it just I, that's the only way I sleep. My mind goes crazy as soon as I lay down, and i got to have something to turn it off. And that seemed to do the that trick for me. Trick. And, and, you know, good sleep equals good everything else. Yeah, so. absolutely. It's, well, it, it's creating a homeostasis in your body. And where everything's working on a balance, and it just, um, that's good for you, man. We sure. need it. It's a, We have receptors for it for a reason. So let's talk about um, the use of it, you know, and your opinion of the use of it with pets. And, and at what age, what age should we really entertain, you know, teens being allowed to use it? That, well, on the pet side. I know side, that every parent's got to choose yeah, that Yeah, well, that, I was going to get to that. But on the, on the pet side, I have always said in the store, and it's one of my, I, I, 
say it all the time. I repeat myself, but pets are our biggest, they're our biggest salesman. Uh, when that, well, especially on the CBD side, whenever you are given a, a product to a pet, there's no placebo effect. The pet's not, it's to them, it's just a different treat or a, you know, a drop of something. They don't, they don't know the benefits. And then 30 minutes later, their anxiety is a lot better. They're sleeping good. They're calmer. And then within a couple of days, your the, the inflammation goes away. Then the, the owner will see that and be like, oh, maybe there's So what you're to- saying is if, if one of our audience has that dog that goes crazy at 4th of July, mm-hmm. that's the best test of this that's product. That's our biggest day for Try pets. Try it out. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> yeah, the pet treats. I bet. Just, and then we have some. I don't think I brought any. But, uh, yeah, we've got uh, pet, a pet tincture. And it's just an olive oil instead of a MCT oil. So tell me about the, just real quickly, the different ways to consume the product. We got edibles. Go <laughs> we've got it all the way down the line, man. We start with smokable. We're, we are, we love the smokable side, a good quality product. Uh, that's with THCA, with uh, CBD. Like I, we, it's not our bread and butter, but we definitely have, some top-notch flour, and it's probably one of my favorite consumptions. But uh, now gummies are huge. I mean, people are just gotten into to the the gummies, and you have every cannabinoid from top to bottom. I brought those for you, actually. Thank you, buddy. But yeah, that's so the I see CBD. Like, is that like a skin cream there? Yeah, Tell me about so, that. Yeah, th- this is one of our uh, best sellers that we have. It's a the uh, two hundred and four hundred milligram topical. Um, but yeah, so good Just for general pain, pain relief, Gen- okay. general pain relief. Um, you know, a lot of people put it on the eczema or whatever, but, uh, yeah, topicals are a way to go. And this is a brand new product that we'll be launching sometime soon. This Tell is me about the, that. the hydrate. Um, and it's just an all around good, uh, good product. So what it, a lot of people are using it on, um, elbows. I use it on my face, which I don't know if I'll, you know, some people are way more sensitive, um, you know, just to breaking out on, on, they use stuff on their face, but I've not had any problems with it. And, uh, but elbows, a lot of people are putting it on their beard. Bobby, my cousin, Bobby's putting it on his beard and it, you know, looks beautiful. Nice. So. <laughs> well, uh, we're going to, we're going to unpack this a little bit later, but mm-hmm. Jason is, uh, our also a sponsor for the concerts at Silverado's. He's got the big tent with the sexy green couches and the, you know, the fun club that, uh, that you you uh, you can join somehow if you buy enough, you know, <laughs> creams or whatever. I'm not sure how that works. We'll get into that in a little bit. But along the way, you've picked up quite the uh, big name customer. Yeah, for your yeah, products. man. We've had some. Oh man, just going into to all that stuff. What Silverados has done has been absolutely like friendships and and partnerships that I never never thought would happen. All right, so we're going to take a quick break and come back and tap more into that. And the big name guest who we're talking about is going to be calling in. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the program. This is Cosmic Kool-Aid, episode three of season one. With me in the booth, I got Mr. Jason Ward, the honky-tonk Willy Wonka himself. <laughs> that is a nickname he picked up this season at Silverado's. Uh, I think a... it was the peacoat, and uh, <laughs> yeah, hard to, hard to deny that one, so you got to rock it. So what you got over there in that box, man? Man, do you like cigars? I mean, 
I wouldn't turn down the the, the chance to, to have one with you right here in the Cosmic Kool Aid Studio. Let's go. What about a Cuban? Cuban cigar. I've never had a Cuban cigar. Things change. Right tonight. here, my first Cuban cigar. Yeah, right so, on the show. Let's uh, go. What we have right here is a Monte Cristo Habana, 2019 limited edition. They are um, okay. Pr- quite superb. A lot of people. When they, uh, they, you know, a lot of people think they smoked a Cuban, but when 90% of Cubans that come from Cuban are fake, right? You got to do quite a bit of uh, investigating. So I've already I'm, cut it for you, so you're, <laughs> you're good to go. So I'm a rookie at this. Am I supposed to like lick it, bite it? What's happening? Yeah, well, yeah, don't, don't, don't bite into it. Hang on. I, you know what I didn't get? Corey's a lighter. Oh, damn it. I do. I mean, I have one. It's just right here. I'm going to have to reach over. That's okay, man. Take your time. All right, we found the lighter. All right, yeah, I'm back. All right, so, um, man, this was a gift to me this this year by by Jen. I love this thing. But uh, so so we're we're not going to get killed by somebody for smoking in here. We're good, right? We're, no, we're good. All right, you're we're the good. boss. Yep. You're the boss, man. So yeah, whenever you light these things up, it's back, it's kind of a ritual. Like I'm, no, you look like a cigar smoker, man. I do. I've heard that before. Definitely look like a cigar smoker. There's a lot of people that say like you kind of sm- supposed to smoke a cigar that fits your stature like that's why they make long skinny ones and then, so well, thank you i guess that's a compliment mm-hmm. uh, no man I, I i love the i love the whole vibe of it i just never like the flavor of it let's oh see really what, let's see what cuba's got to okay so here. well you're gonna take so this is the thing like whenever you get into to cigars and bourbon and you know Cannabis and all that kind of, you become a connoisseur of sorts. You know what I mean? Like with flavor and all that stuff. So that you're going to taste some, going to taste a little bit of leather. I know that sounds horrible, but like leather is actually has some good flavor into it. And then um, there's a lot of chocolate in that. But whenever you're used to, you know, you're not used to it. It's not going to, like you've already fucked the whole thing up. <laughs> Yeah, man, you definitely look like a cigar smoker. You can can rock that. Yeah, they, you just spit that part out. I got out. a piece of it in my mouth. That's all right. This lighter's dope, though. Who gave yeah, you this? Yeah, Jennifer gave me that. that Jennifer so, Diamonds and Whiskey, Yeah, Jennifer? so that, that lighter is actually the uh, bass guitarist from Three Doors Down. I'm trying to get it on camera. Yeah. It's not working out. There we go. Look at that lighter. Cool lighter, Jen. Yeah. Well done. The ba- bass guitar for Three Doors Down made that. Nice. And then this ring. What got all kinds of shit? Isn't it crazy in the last two years that the the circle of friends that has come into our lives, just the people Dude, that we're talking to on a daily basis like now because I, of Silverado's. Oh, nuts. the the connections that Silverado's has brought has been crazy to me. Like the you know the the day that uh, oh my god we talk about all of them, but uh, like we just Ward Davis on in, on its own. I don't know. Like it, there's not enough people that know who Ward Davis is that that. If you're in the community, you you know, but Ward Davis is he is country music man. Like that guy is country music, and to to be able to to have made friends with him on on the level that we're friends, like it's it's I I still fanboy about it. Like that guy is he he's he's legit. He's a real deal. He really is, man. And he uh, he's uh, he's best friends with Cody Jinx. He's got he's got some really cool friends, and they all come from the same agency and. With any luck, one day we'll get them all at Silverado's. Yeah. But with that being said, we did have Ward Davis last year. That's where Jason met him and made this connection. And hopefully, it looks like he's coming back this year. Good. No, he's yeah. he's confirmed. He's, he's coming back. This he's year. coming back. Yeah, man. Like I, I tell you that with that guy, like I, I'll never. You know, we were setting up the tent, and uh, you know he he's a he's a big guy, man. Like he's just he's a, probably like what six six. I'd say six, he's five. six five, yeah. six six. I can you know if I I'm six four. If I look up to somebody, you know, it's like. I, I, you know, he, it's 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 different. Uh, you know, looking up to somebody like on on a height level, and then especially if you kind of look up to them on like, you're like, oh god, that it's like Waylon Jennings walking in to me. <laughs> like that that guy was, he come walking over and sat down, and he uh, just he just smoked with us. We had a good time, man. We and it, just his stories. He's like t- he's so smart though. He's like talking to a like you feel like a chimp. He's like one of those people that. You know, they're just very, very educated. Well, and you can tell in his Facebook posts that the dude's <laughs> wildly intelligent. Dude, he's his just, Facebook he's just posts smarter are than the average bear. Yeah. He's yeah, funny. He's good. Yeah. But, uh, hell, we could call him. 
Well, let's uh, let's do that right now. <laughs> What's up, dude? Ward Davis. Ward Davis. What are you doing, man? This is Corey Short. You are on the program Cosmic Kool Aid. How you doing, man? Man, I'm pretty pretty cosmic. <laughs> pretty cosmic. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Man, I I just uh, thanks for taking this call, Ward. We uh, talking about you and just uh, you know how how we made friends and and all that and kind of the the music business and uh, you know obviously that's the the business Corey's in and I love it. I'm a fan, but um, I think what I was wanting to talk to you about really is just like the current state of country music and the rise of mm-hmm. independent artists like yourself. Hmm. What well, you want to know? <laughs> What is it like right now? What is the, 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 how, how is the culture shifting? Like how, what do you feel as a, as an artist, like that it wasn't five years ago? Well, man, honestly, like, uh, I noticed about seven years ago, I was at a Cody Jink show and I saw these people that were there to hear him sing. And I thought, who the hell is Cody Jinks and why are all these people here to hear him sing? <laughs> and it wasn't, and it wasn't that I hadn't heard of him because I had, but I'd known that I was going to be on the show on the bill. So I'd looked him up, mm-hmm. you know, I didn't know, I'd never heard of him really, just barely. And so, uh, I was like, well, this doesn't make any sense because when people are famous, you've heard of them. Right. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> It was just kind of like this voila moment, um, similar to the one like when I saw Sturgill Simpson on on Conan O'Brien. Yeah. That was another moment where it was like, wait a minute, well, well, who is this guy? What is he doing on TV? Like, yeah, uh, uh, I I mean, you just kind of see these little things like trickle into to mainstream culture to the point where it's like, you know. Um, I mean, you can go, I, I can go down to downtown Hartsville here where I live and sling a dead cat around and I can hit 10 people who have heard of Cody Jinks mm-hmm. and he's never been on the radio or had a major record label release or anything like that. So, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know exactly what's driving it. I think, uh, I know this guy named Russ Davidson and Russ told me, Russ published Achy Breaky Heart. And he said that the thing that was so great about Achy Breaky Heart was that everybody either loved it or they loved to hate mm-hmm. it. And I think that's kind of what's going on with popular country music. People either love it or they love to. Can I, t- can I say bad no, words? Yeah, yeah you're wrong. Um, okay, yeah. They love it or they talk shit about it. Like there's never, there's, there is a middle, but there's also like that hard right and that hard left where everybody can say, we hate that, we hate that. So I think that, just the the noise that that makes has caused people to like seek out other options that aren't necessarily in the mainstream right so so you just met cody five years ago ward uh no it was uh it was like 2016 so about seven years ago february of 16 so how old were you when you decided that you wanted to do this and who who was one of the artists that that inspired you well see like do what <laughs> to, to do to do music for a living to be yeah, Ward davis like, the Ward davis we know I, I don't i mean what's a living you know <laughs> like i never really i mean seriously like i was i was just i was thinking sitting here earlier thinking about this one time i was uh, I had a publishing deal and I was waiting tables in Nashville and my brother-in-law was in town. I went and met him somewhere and I remember him like looking, he came out and met me in the parking lot of his hotel and he like looked at my car and he looked at me and he was just like, Lord, well, what, what's going on, man? Like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, I'm great, man. Cars, everything's good. I'm great. Were you kidding me? Like I had no idea that I was just in uh, like total destitute squalor. <laughs> Uh, like he, when I, I knew that I wanted to, I knew that playing music made me feel good. And I knew that people liked it. Like from, from when I was like, you know, probably nine or 10 years old playing piano. And 
you know, them, you know, playing piano and that sort of want to sing. I saw what Garth Brooks was doing and he seemed to he seemed to be doing all right. Uh and he he was, you know, not good looking really and uh I was like, man, but I could do that. So I kinda uh you know, I started I was playing piano and singing and then I entered the county fair talent show and this, this kid beat me. His name's Kent Early. If you're listening, Kent. <laughs> fuck, fuck you, man. <laughs> well, didn't you? But, uh, go ahead. No, nah, but anyway, yeah. So I, that made me want to go home and play guitar. And, and he, he played guitar and sang, uh, When Did You Stop Loving Me? And he beat me. And so I went home that night and started learning guitar. So have you always kind of went against the, the I, let me ask you this. So I read an article about you one time that didn't your music, your, your uh, piano teacher kick you out or make your, your dad come and get you or something like that. Did, did, did I read that right? Yeah. Yeah. She, I was, I was trying to play, I was going to play Garth Brooks songs. I was playing by ear and she hated it. Yeah. So, she wanted, you know, she wanted me to read notes and shit. Right. And you don't play like that. I mean, you you kind of play by sound. I, I wish I did. I mean, I, man, I never really got. I'm I'm not that great of a. I'm I'm really not a great piano player. Like I'm not very good. I have a few little, few little things that I can do here and there. But like my my producer is got him Moose Brown. Now he's ACM piano player uh, of the year two times. He can play piano. I just like I play like a writer, you know, like like I write with it. Yeah. And, uh, but also, that's I guess that's my style. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, it's also my limitation. Yeah. Well, you, uh, God, I mean, you're you're country music to me, and I know that you're you're too damn humble to to kind of agree with that. But man, like, I, it's I, there's more people need to know Ward Davis, and because I know if if people. People know something you do, whether they know you or not. I mean, and that's that's just the bottom line. And I'm I'm really hoping that this culture and this new wave of music just pushes you way out there, uh, you know, and, and instead of, uh, you know, Co um, Cody Jinks or Scotty Pippen. I mean, you're you're the damn man, and I hope that I hope that we uh, yeah blow it up. Ward, tell me about a couple of artists on the scene today that you enjoy listening to. Uh, hmm. Hmm. It's a tough one. I don't, really, I don't, I don't like anything and I don't listen to much. Uh, when I get in the car, um, I mean, it's a dead heat, uh, between two little girls over like the 10 spot, which is like 2010 pop music or frozen soundtrack. So, I don't really get to listen to a lot of new stuff. Uh, when I do get stuff sent my way, like um, it's exceptional. So like Charles Charles Wesley Godwin sent me his uh, like his work tape recordings of his new record, like his home recordings, and it was awesome. Yeah, loved it. Uh, you know, but that that doesn't happen a lot. My wife tries to. Uh, cram her music down my throat sometimes. What is Natalie she wants me listen to listen to? You listen to Young Gravy. <laughs> and... Oh, good stuff. She listens to Young. She listens to Young Gravy and Morgan Wallen and uh, I like we we listen to Doja Cat together. <laughs> I like Doja. Doja Cat. Doja Cat, hey man. Doja Cat's badass, man. That chick is awesome. What about the um who is who is exploding right now? What is her Laney Wilson. Lainey like Wilson. what what do you what do you oh, see with yeah, her Lainey that she's kinda doing that that's you think it's Yellowstone? I mean the, I'm I'm waiting on you to get get on Yellowstone. I mean I have that I think that's been a big thing for the culture too. The the, the um, shift. I, I like Lainey Wilson. She's uh, um. Do you think it's a little more know, pop I mean, than what you would want to listen to? Yeah, with dude, I'm such an old curmudgeon though. Like, what do I know? Like, I heard her. I, I catch myself like singing songs that I don't like. I guess right. <laughs> and I've been singing that heart like heart like a truck, 
and it's not that I don't like it. I mean, I, I must like it right because I'm singing it to myself all the time. But what well, goes back to I what you said around, earlier? Yeah. Well, yeah, man. It's like you know, I just don't like songs about trucks. I don't like songs about songs. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I'm and I'm getting to where I only like songs about girls. Like, I'm just it's it's just getting worse and worse the older I get. I'm like looking for. I want to hear a song about a uh, about a tiger eating a man. You know what I'm right. talking about? You, you, yeah, I absolutely know. You want to talk about some uh, to uh, kill a Majora stuff, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, I want some gang. I want some gangrene in my music. So Ward has got me. Ward's got me reading literature, man. Whenever I was telling you, or I was telling earlier that you're like you're one of the smartest people to talk to that that I that that I've talked to, and I kind of feel like a chimp whenever we do have conversations just because you're so, you're so intelligent. Like you shouldn't be that intelligent. Like just by looking at you, uh, I am very, <laughs> you're fucking smart, uh, man. But, um, man, I was actually doing, what did you say? I was doing some uh, chemistry equations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got on a FaceTime award earlier, Dude. but anyway, <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well, he was indulging in our in the product so you know that, he's one of my my good customers so well that's uh I'm a client. that's awesome uh ward what's your favorite trinity farms product so far uh it's gonna be the uh sex panther uh sex panther all day yeah what is the sex panther is that a gummy it's a thca flower okay it's pretty okay. It's it's the Ward standards. Excellent. Ward, one more question before I let you go. Other than me, who would you, past or present, who would you like to sit down and pass a joint with? We're very cannabis. I'm not saying you do that, but if you did. If I did. Past or present. Don't say me. Um, do they have to? Be stoners? Or no, could no, I no, like... no, no, no. You're just, they, you just, they are. Just say they are. Oh, okay. So, but, so they like do it and it's just not in the history books. Yeah, no. No, no, no. It's not written. You just get to sit down and have a joint with whoever, past or present. All right. Um, I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Benjamin Franklin. Really? Did you know he was a yeah, hill farmer? Like or he grew hemp. It was a hemp farm. Yeah, yeah, that's probably why I picked him. Yeah, he uh, he was um, I just have a feeling he'd be very like he he was this fat, ugly scientist. All right, mm -hmm. he had nothing going for him at all. Uh, somehow he's over in Europe, like just going around uh, Paris, just uh banging all these ladies <laughs> drinking all the time like he's like a celebrity he's like a superstar again it's like me it's like garth brooks it's like yeah what look at this guy he's this he looks nothing like brad pitt and but he's out there doing his and, thing but yeah i bet benjamin franklin could be like he could tell me some secrets and stuff yeah i was thinking it would be Hemingway, but you know what do i know Man, I see. That's the whole thing. Like, I, I, you know, I don't know if I'd like him. That's the whole. I, I, True. What if I didn't like? Yeah. Well, what if I didn't says, like it goes back to the whole "don't meet your hero" thing. That. Uh, yeah, that, and he was yeah. a he was a really bad drunk. And like, since I quit drinking, like, it's not that I, I mind people drinking, but man, when they get like really, really stupid drunk, it's hard to be around. It really. It's hard to be around, and I have a feeling he did that like every single day of his life. Right, that's very understandable. So, yeah, don't don't meet you. And where I think Benjamin, yeah. Benjamin Franklin probably, you know, he had to hold it together for some like constitutional conventions. That's some important uh, shit to do. Yeah, he had to discover science, man. Yeah. Huh. So yeah, Ben Franklin. It's a good. It's a good one. Well, Ward, thank you so much for your time tonight, man. And uh, I look forward to you coming back to Silverado's later this year. And uh, hopefully we can get you yeah, in studio for the podcast while you're in town next time. Oh, that'd be awesome, man. I'd love hey, to. Hey, Ward, uh, you see, you're at uh, Radio Room fr Friday, and I need some tickets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, saw a, I saw a post on my Facebook that was real stupid. <laughs> and... Uh, 
somebody else wrote it about that show. <laughs> but I'll be there. It was like, come, ye, come one, come all. It was lame. <laughs> all right. Well, I'm going to call uh, and yeah. remind you for my, my tickets. I, I enjoyed my reserved seating last time whenever I met you and uh, Earl went to Bristol. So kind of expect that again. Oh, that pit. <laughs> that picnic table over to the left. Yes, of the stage. that was perfect. Yeah. And I actually I'll see what I can do. Well, I know you got some pull. Man, it's just an <laughs> honor to, to to be friends with you and uh, you know, I I appreciate you. Hey man, likewise, Jason. Uh man, y'all have a good night and hey, I'm gonna I gotta call you tomorrow, Jason, because I gotta talk about this chemistry set. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Tell Natalie I said hey. Hey, Ward, have a great night, buddy. Thank you. <laughs> see you, man. All right, see you guys. Bye. Man, wow. what a cool ass dude, dude, dude. He's he's amazing. Like I, he's he's that guy. Like that too. That guy is all the time. I actually sent him. Um, he he's never d- took a dab before, like from a, a dab set or a dab, dab rig or anything. So I sent uh, I, I sent him some. And I said, you know, just Facetime me whenever you get it. You know, I just want to see how this goes, and uh, he uh, he did, and he he called, and I was like, it's like, man, I'm I'm naked. I just got out of the shower. I'll call you back. <laughs> so I called him back, and he had already indulged. <laughs> and you know, whenever you you take a dab or whatever, to to start slow, no sure. matter what it is. Yeah, I don't think he did that. Sure. So I see you got some whiskey over yeah, there. Is that, is that for us? Yeah, man. Let's pour a glass. What, what do you? So are you a? Are you a? Uh, a, a bourbon guy you're not really I, I, i'm a bourbon rookie okay well we we need game. to get so this is this is my favorite thing in the world like one of them like it is if if trinity farms wasn't what i do i think i was just smell that so this is uh a weller antique 107 Wow. And a lot of people, fantastic. well, that's what I'm saying. A lot of people that whenever they first start into bourbon or they start into whiskey, they, they, um, they say, oh, it's like it's dark liquor. It's not just dark liquor. It is, this stuff has been aged to perfection. You hear that? Let me, let me put this up with the camera. That sounds amazing. Oh, that's nectar of the gods, man. <laughs> That right there is so. This could have you ever heard of Pappy Van Winkle? Yes, Rip Van Winkle. So yes. this this could have been this Weller Antique One Hundred Seven could have been a Pappy, but according to somebody's palate, they came in and it wasn't quite up to Pappy standards. But to me and you, our palate, we're never going to know. Sure. And the palate is the different things that you taste. So Pappy is one of those that you got to get a lottery ticket. Yeah. To oh yeah. Be you. Able to buy, I, I, there, I, I have my first. Um, cheers. Cheers, brother. I had my first uh, Rip Van Winkle. Um, the, the, I, I got my first bottle at home, uh, just a little bit left in there. But it's basically this. Like, I mean, it t- to me, it tastes identical to this. It is this. But anyway, so I, I'm a proof guy. I've only ever known one speed of drinking. Okay. So this is where this is where you acquire this. It's okay. all it's go, and then you don't want to taste brown liquor for. So I'm Six going months. to want to drink this slower than say Jameson. Oh my God! Yeah, we're gonna <laughs> sit. So that, I, bourbon is one of my favorite things in the world, and I don't want to get drunk off of it. Like I don't want I don't want to to pound it to where I wake up the next morning and I think um, caramel, uh, bu- uh, butter, and just like. Uh, perfect vanilla makes me sick right like i want to love this and i do love this and it's I'm just, pretty damn good i'm just a collector of it but and this is called weller this is a weller 107 this is one of the it's one of the more sought out now what does the 107 mean uh that what does the one is it the it's a proof it's the proof on there so you have the antique 107 it's 107 proof and then um yeah this, so this is a weeded okay so, so we did bourbon. So what? Like, so uh, what? What's a good? Uh, what price starts a good bottle of whiskey? So that is that. That's the big debate. Like if you get in these groups and stuff like that, man. Like a, a price of whiskey is going to be what you want to pay for it. You're not going to go find this on the shelf. Okay. You're just not going to. I mean, every now and then you might get lucky, but lucky. But for the most part, 
this shit ain't going to be on the shelf. Do You're you, going to have to know somebody. You're going to have to go into that ABC store, that liquor store, and make friends with these people and buy shit you don't want. So here's the thing. I have a buddy. I have that connection. And the two times that I've reached out, because one of my other buddies said, Corey, get me some pappy. You own no, a bar. You just don't go say, hey, get me some So pappy. I call my Nobody. buddy at the at the store. Mm-hmm. Where, where, how can I get some pappy? He's like, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> You're not like, getting no. it. Man, I, you, He's you, like, you, we're going to have like, Four bottles in the whole county. Yeah, nobody's gonna know which store they're going to. It'll and then be, it's on a lottery. Yeah, it's like a it's impossible. And then if say you have somebody in that store, I'm not saying this happens at every store, but there are. I mean, the the, the people that get it, they know they can turn around and, and buy it and knock down anywhere from fifteen hundred to two thousand dollars. When but a bottle is only going to be seventy eighty bucks. Right. You know, it, it, they especially in North Carolina, you have to sell it by that MSR. Right. price right so, you know that's the secondary market that's fucking ridiculous so, whenever it comes like to how it. ridiculous so like if i get an 80 dollar bottle of whatever that and what's that going to go for aftermarket um uh, th- this isn't that bad i mean you could 200 bucks on the on the aftermarket okay. uh, but it would be a 50 60 dollar bottle of bourbon and does this it, <laughs> so johnny walker scotch mm-hmm. i'm not a scotch drinker not at all no not I, even I, in when the you, same wheelhouse as this because it smells the same. Mm-mm. I'm just not a brand. When you, that's my palate. Now that's an opinion. Like sure. there's a lot of people. I to me, Scotch, uh, it and Irish whiskeys uh, taste a little more. There's a metally taste at the end. Okay. There's just something so beautiful about a a, a Kentucky bourbon or a true bourbon. A, a true bourbon's 51 percent corn. Uh, aged for four years in a charred oak barrel. That's kind of the definition of bourbon. You really know your shit. I love bourbon. Yeah. See, I, I just, yeah. I just, I just, I just like to get drunk. <laughs> right. Well, yes. Yeah, so and, and hey, man, I love to let. That's usually going to be like on a margarita or some shit that that bottom shelf at Silverado. But I've that, never really graduated out of that college well, mentality. Time. You know, I, I pound Jaeger and Bud Light to achieve a mission, right. achieve a goal, and I, I achieve that. You goal achieve that goal every time. time. In, in record speed. Right. Um, can't always remember it the next day. I would like to elevate my We're drinking going to, we to a better to, level of... you got to put your pinky out whenever you do that. <laughs> oh, pinky out. Okay, I heard. Mm-hmm. So, you got to have a dope pinky ring whenever you do that. I'm going to work on that. All right. We're going to go to Goodwill and find me one. <laughs> Speaking of, we're going to take a quick break, right. but when we come right back, we got so much more to unpack right. with Mr... Honky Tonk Willy Wonka himself, Jason <laughs> Ward, is in the building. Do I get applause? Like I, I, I thought the that, last podcast. Do you pipe that? Because there's nobody here. The applause is edited in, okay. edited in after the fact, like right now. Uh, okay. Thank you. All right. Again, Jason Ward in the studio. I'm Corey Short. This is Cosmic Kool Aid, and we'll be right back. <laughs> okay. Hey y'all, I'm Dunbar with Instant Karma Asheville. We are a one-stop hippie shop and a true Asheville experience. And we have 3D tapestries. You gotta check this out. See what I'm saying? Every 3D tapestry comes with a free pair of 3D glasses. It's amazing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've got grassroots hats. Belly dancing gear. And we have beautiful dream catchers. We're catching all those dreams that you don't want to have. We have locally made Asheville soap. It's delicious. You're gonna want some for you and your mom. <laughs> the 
those would be incense matches. They're really great for the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, we have great pipes too. And we have yoga mats. They're really beautiful and soft and they really help you to just calm down. We sell dragon eye journals and pendants. All sorts of beautifully made local stuff. two locations, one in West Asheville on Haywood Road, and the other one is downtown on North Lexington Avenue. Make sure you check out our online store at instantkarmaashville.com, and I can say we are the place you want to be. Welcome back to Cosmic Kool-Aid. I am your host, Corey Short. With me in the booth, Mr. Jason Ward. He is the owner of Trinity Farms, our sponsor for not only this show, but our concerts at Silverado's. He is a good friend of mine. Um, our mamas are besties. His, his, his wife is a good friend. Our families, our kids. Um, hey, I need to say hey to my mom. I'm not said hey to my mom yet. I'm not said hey, hey mama. to mama. Hey, mama. We uh, just... just Stoked to have you here, bro. You Thank really you, are have become one of my favorite people, and I'm super thankful to uh, to Josh Brockman and some of our mutual friends that connected us. And I'm just I'm grateful that uh, that you're here and that we're working together on stuff. And it's it's been a lot of fun. It has been a awesome partnership and an awesome friendship, man. Like so I, I, I need you to clarify this shit for me, real yeah, quick. Yeah, you though. have this, fucking gnawed on that thing like a damn the, the Cuban cigar. I'm not even gonna worry about lighting it at this point. We're just trying to keep it together. <laughs> so. <laughs> so like, do they make these with rubber tips where you don't chew off, where it doesn't flake off in your mouth? Because well, that part's kind of gross. It's not a, it's not a, like a, a, thing, a thing, a beef jerky. Like, listen. Yeah, like you're totally, <laughs> like, do you know what, there's some little, <laughs> some little Cuban dude that works his ass off on it, and somebody like, do you know, that shit had to get smuggled over here, Corey. Think about what you're doing. You're chewing on it, you gnawed what's on a, it. What's a, way to, what's a way to make it better? What are, what are you doing there? You can, so, you can dip doesn't really make it better, but you do get a little bit of this um, this bourbon flavor if you just dip it in there. But now I got chunks of shit in my mm. bourbon. <laughs> yeah, you, well, mine is still intact. So it's you, all right. We'll, 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 we'll survive. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so again, Mr. Jason Ward. Hold We're going to get you better at this. Like, we've got to. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a really, yeah, you're really, really bad at this. That's all right. So, um... Let's talk Silverados. Mm -hmm. So talk Jason Silverado. is our one of our chief sponsors. He is uh, he's got the cool section, his little Trinity Farms VIP area with cool green couches. Um, there's going to be cool ways to enter to win to join that party this year. Um, he just brings so much excitement to what we're doing at Silverados, and um, I never wanted to make this show all about that. But while we got Jason here, um, man, he just makes it incredible. He's got his T-shirt cannon out there, firing off T-shirts off the stage. He's building relationships with all these artists, which I'm the you know I'm the guy bringing them in, but I'm not the guy to take them out to lunch and do those things. That uh, that shit gives me anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> so when I have an artist that I need somebody funny and charming and cool to take them out to lunch, Jason's my call for that, and and it went really well for us this year. It was amazing, man. God, we have had. I when I tell like I've said it a couple times, it's just a match made in heaven, and how great this has been. But so we, just, we started we started the year off. His first excursion was taking none other than Polly Shore yeah. out to lunch. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me about that, buddy. So when we rolled up with Polly Shore, so I was setting the tent up like it's always setting the tent up. The tent's half the damn job, man. Like there, we got a lot of shit over there. It's like shout be, out Billy Ricketts. Yeah, yeah. Billy's my right hand man when it comes to that. I do 
he's clutch. Yep. So you can't have him. I know he's working for you a little bit once concert season comes. He's yours, you bro. Have to give it. He's you gotta, yours, gotta, man. You got to let go of He's him, yours. He's, he's amazing. So faithful. But, um, yeah, man, you the, the, the Polly Shore day, you had uh, – you had called. I was sweat. It was what? It was what was it? July. I mean, it was hotter than hell. Whenever it was, I was out there sweating, sweating like crazy. And then you know, getting the tent up. And you're like, "Hey, uh, you want to take Polly Shore? Pick Polly Shore up?" I'm like, "Like you mean Polly Shore from MTV? Like your whole childhood?" The like, weasel. Yeah, yeah. Like man, when I, when I say hero, and you were talking about that earlier with Ward, the don't meet your hero thing. Th- that was kind of at that age bracket looking at my 12 year old like he said he set a whole culture like he is everything that he built a whole culture so whenever you you get that call and you're like damn like Paul, Paul Shore it's probably Shore 25 30 years later but it's Paul Shore so I go pick him up and uh I'm driving there I'm kind of trying I've already got in my mind okay I'm not gonna fangirl or you know like we're going to just act normal and cool because you know it's kind of a turn off sometimes <laughs> with some of these people but uh i pull up and he's got two people with him she's sitting outside waiting they take me to kind of his room we go, go around and he comes out I'm like damn damn if that's not probably sure like it really is it's him so he gets in the car and he's who you think he is from the second he gets in the car Hey, what's up, buddy? Like, I mean, honestly, like, it was terrible. But, like, that, he was that guy whenever he was, same, <laughs> same, guy. same personality, <laughs> same attitude. And uh, we had kind of well, set him up to go to, to social. Mm-hmm. Well, they had had a long night. Uh, it wasn't part of anything. He had been broke down. And he had some hell story like that. Oh, Lord. Yeah, hell is bad. So they were, he could have been in a lot worse mood. If if uh, if he wanted right. to, but we he he wanted to go eat North Carolina barbecue, so I'm sitting here like a local and don't know shit about the town that I'm in. Like as far you know, like we just you you know the the good stuff, but you don't know. Like I don't get towards Asheville. Like I stay on the Black Mountain side. So he's wanting barbecue. I'm sitting there thinking well, we could go to Black Mountain, but then we got to come back here. But anyway, uh, we took him to. Uh, where do we go? Some barbecue place in, in downtown Asheville. It was, it was delicious, but first time I'd ever ate there too. But um, it was the funniest thing when we got out of the car. <laughs> when we get out of the car, so there's three of uh, uh, me, him, a uh, girl, and, and, and the, the people that were performing with him. And so we get out of the car and walking towards the restaurant, he's up front, and I'm thinking, oh God, this is getting ready to be a damn show. I would probably sure walking in there. So he did opened, anybody recognize him? Well, this is what I'm getting at. Like, this is funnier than hell. And like, I, I normally wouldn't tell this story, but it's just too damn funny. So I'm walking in. He opens the door for me because he was he was up front. And then I kind we kind of go in and we're walking towards the 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 counter. And somebody comes up to me. And he's like, hey, Jason, what's up, man? I follow you on Facebook and, and, and all that. Like, he didn't, they didn't want a picture or anything like that, but they had recognized me <laughs> before anybody had recognized Polly. But it was like two minutes later. He was probably like, bro, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny. He did talk about it at, at, at the table, but then, man, it was just like after people realized who was there, like they were all over that fucking guy. Oh, like, okay. yeah, I, didn't, I got, didn't hear that story. Well, he wound up going... He wound up going in the back and wanting to talk to him, and he wound up getting our food free. I guess that's kind of something that they, nice. they yeah. yeah, I mean, he, he's, I'm probably sure. And I, you probably know. a pretty regular thing. Yeah, yeah, he walked, he walked to the back, and it, he was the one that initiated that. Like, I'm going to go to the back and look around. <laughs> and, like uh, the kitchen? Yeah, like he went in the <laughs> kitchen. Like, dude, he was wheezing the juice, man. Oh, that's like, great. Yeah, that guy was, he was... Uh, but it was hilarious. Dude, it's so funny. Like his stand-up routine that night at Silverado's, as well as like some of the podcasts, he's really like scared of country folk. Like he thinks we're some backwoods. Oh, it's absolutely inbred. Like yeah. he really, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's absolutely some son-in-law shit with him. Like he he does like he uh, great skit though. Great stand-up. Yeah, like I, we had a good time. But we yeah, uh, it was good for we sure. We indulged in some some Trinity Farms products that night too. So it was Excellent. we had a good time. In case you don't know, folks, we are very pro-cannabis on this show. Uh, I spent my whole adult life 
uh, anti-drug. I was that kid that paid attention and dare in school. And I, uh, I avoided cannabis and consumed alcohol like it was water. And my weight and my medical issues stem from those decisions. I wish I had found cannabis at 18 instead of alcohol. And I would look a lot different today, I do believe. Probably be a lot healthier, too. Nonetheless, today it is the reason that I sleep and have good friends like Jason. Because I'm sitting here puffing on a cigar and... You know, now, pouring, I do not encourage anyone going out there and doing anything illegal that will get him in trouble. Go see no, Jason. A, yeah, He's got you, everything you need completely we're all legal. We, we 100% completely work on legal. compliance, and that is our number one, it's our number one mission. Um, and, you know, hopefully hopefully across the board it'll be legalized nationwide before long. I think it's coming. I think it's soon. Uh, but certainly thankful for pioneers like you here in North Carolina, at least. Oh, God, man, there's been you a know, lot of people bringing that's paid gore, those dues. gourmet shit to us. Well, so, you know, thanks. I mean, there, I think that everybody's had a hand in it, and it definitely is kind of, you know, trailblazer stuff on the legal end. But, man, you got to you gotta go back in time and, and look at how many people have sat in a jail cell for 40 years for this shit. And they need to be out. Out. And it, Absolutely. Uh, it's, it, from, to take any kind of credit of that, man, it takes away from that whole culture and that whole movement. Sure. That, and I, and I'll, I'll never take, I, you know. I'll, yeah, it's really cool of you to say that, Well, too. I, I just, like, I know my, my role on that. It's a very touchy subject. Like, for somebody to sell, you know, CBD and legal products is a lot different than the people that put their life on the line to save well, their life or somebody else. It is a touchy sh- subject, and it shouldn't be. Folks, if you're not if you're not into it, look into it. Educate yourself. There's so many good benefits, good values yeah. to your life, your health, your family. Um, it, it doesn't need the stink around it that a lot of us carry. That I carried most of my life. Um, it does. You know, I, I, I operate every day, manage a ton of employees, a big family, and um, I'm, I'm a daily user for my health and my sleep. And everyone, I believe has a strain for them for something that ails them. Yeah. We got receptors for it, man. Like it, it see, There's a it reason is. it's becoming legal. Mm-hmm. Look into it. That's yep. all I'm saying. For sure. 100%. So thank you for what you do. Oh, man. Well, Trinity I'm Farms. Just... So real quick, before we leave that subject, tell them where they can find your stuff. Uh, we're at trinityfarmshempco.com, and we are also have a storefront in downtown Black Mountain, uh, right between uh, My Father's Pizza and uh, Dripolator and Trailhead Pizza in the little courtyard there, 112B Cherry Street. Awesome. And you can see they got really fine gourmet. There it is. I got you clarified. Good gourmet packaging prices. Everything is top of the line. And uh, truly just a remarkable company. We're so glad they're our sponsors and our friends. And, uh, you know, the game is changing, and you're at the forefront of that. We love to be a part of it, and we can't wait to keep going on with it. So let's, uh, let's shift the conversation towards what I believe truly makes you special. Um, so, you know, your, your business is great. You, you came from a, a nine to five corporate job with Ingalls warehouse, which is a huge employer around here. Um, nobody, you know, great company to work for. You left that great company to work for, to go pursue your dreams and your vision to do this. And, uh, but even still, all that is superfluous to what That's makes you special. Word. And I'm not even sure that it fits there, that word. I just I, used I was, hey, that might have been your whiskey, what superfluous, yeah. whatever. That's the word, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the deal. Um, you have a gift of, of presentation that is unlike anything I've ever seen. And by that I mean the way you present yourself online, the way your wife presents herself and your family online, the way you present your business online. The way you have a gift to enhance everything you put out in the universe. And that starts with a couple of viral videos, which we're going to show right here in just a second. Um, But uh, tell tell me a little bit about that, man. What is it that inspires you to put out such cool content? Well, I mean, that's those are, you know, words that I'm not deserving of, but like I'm just another another guy in. Bro, you've developed over 100,000 followers twice. So yeah, I mean, there's a there's a couple points in my life with with the video. I've always considered it, um, like BC and AD in my life of whenever all that that went down. Um, we were at a drive-through one night. Like I said, I, like you said, I was working for Ingles, um, 
I had to get up. It was a Friday night. I had to get up the next morning at like 3.30 in the morning. And we had went through um, cookout drive through And it's something that I've always kind of played around with and, and goofed off with the whole sling blade stuff since 1996, just like anybody, like 40-year-old dad my right. age has done. But uh, we went through there, and, uh, man, I don't know. I just, Did you plan I, that? No, no. Like, <laughs> I, it, it just it, it didn't. Like, the first one, no. It just happened. I did put my camera up, and I was just like, I, I was, you know, I always pick at Amy. Like, we've always kind of go back and forth with, with her. And uh, that was, I, I just, I let it fly. I let it, I let it go. And, you know, when I, I said the, the period part, because she had wanted to go through there because she was having, you know, she was craving some chocolate and all that <laughs> shit. So, yeah, man. And so th that, whenever that happened, I went back home and I, I threw it online. I had like 300 followers or something. Like it was just like a basic Facebook page that we, that I had, you know? And uh, I don't know, man. Like the next morning, I, I posted it. I went to bed. I woke up at three o'clock in the morning and it was just like, what the hell? Like this is, this is, now you got to think, this is just in one day, one day, like wow. that, that part was just one day, how it kind of blew up overnight and just life wasn't the same really after that for, for me personally, it just, everything changed that day. It was, uh, I got up. All right. Hold that. Hold that thought for a second. We're going to go ahead and show the audience this video and then we're going to come back and talk about okay. it. Y'all take a look. All right. Hi there. I'm just wondering if I for you today. Yes, sir. I was kind of looking for something other deep. Mm hmm. I'm so sorry. I couldn't get that. What'd you say? You got any French fried potatoes for sale in there? <laughs> I don't think we do, unfortunately. <laughs> mm. Well. Skinny vanilla latte. You said vanilla? Skinny vanilla latte. You got a skinny vanilla latte in there? Yes, Ice cream. Mm. <laughs> that got coffee in it. Ice cream. Coffee kind of make me nervous. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Mm. We want one of those. All right, Ken. You said you wanted a skinny vanilla latte? Yes, sir. Is there anything else we can get for you? You got any sweet tea in there? We do. Let me get a big one. A venti? A what? You said you wanted a venti time? I don't reckon I ever heard of it. Yes, you want a venti. Okay. Is that a big one? Yeah. Yes. Alright, Ken. Okay. So that's a uh, grande latte skinny vanilla and a uh, venti shake and sweet tea. Is there anything else we can get for you? That's it. I reckon that'd be alright. Okay. It'll be 741 at the window, I think. God. Alright, Ken. Jason. <laughs> alright, so, man, I bet I've watched that video. 200 times this shit's funny jason tell me uh tell me how your life changed after that video yeah it, it was so you you have to you have to look back at and go back to the the old school days of the internet when i say old school like the old g you know the videos you would there would be one video con content makers were making one video a day and not or one video a week and not 40 you know, you get consumed so much now with so much content. Like it's 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 a different stage now than what it was then. Like the, these people now are making four, five, six, seven videos a day, and they're you know the TikToks, and you can watch twenty videos in two minutes. Right. It's just it wasn't like that then. So when you put a video up to get somebody to watch a two minute video now, like it's it doesn't happen that much. Like your our attention spans are like ten seconds. So. I woke up the next morning and it that video had kind of went everywhere. I don't know if you remember there was a um, there was a, a little ticker on Facebook that was uh, trending, like your trending videos all over the worldwide. Yep. So that was on there and then it was trending on uh, YouTube later on that day. So I had every radio station, every podcast, all the podcasts were just kind of getting big then calling like wanting me to be on there and especially because of that skit they wanted me to do radio stuff and just like do do some commercials and shit like that um but yeah man did, it it, ever, did you ever actually no, you know i really didn't i saw i saw something on your facebook a memory from you and amy flying to yeah so that was that was just for overall youtube that wasn't necessary that was mostly the nerf videos the nerf videos were actually the bigger than the sling blade 
Okay. Those were huge, man. We had um, we had ES. We were on ESPN with that one on like like I can't remember what show it was. Uh, ESPN. Uh, Snoop Dogg shared it to his personal page, and I don't know who did. I mean, it was on Snoop Dogg's page. And then Playboy had shared. It was all kinds of stuff. You know, everybody kind of, they like, on that, those Nerf videos, like Amy's booty was like front and center. <laughs> so are, you were getting a check from YouTube? Well, you on the personal side, like the independent side, yeah. But where I screwed up early on was signing my content away to some of these people like the big the big ones back then were are, were you remember Unilad? Yep. Unilad was huge and Unilad would they they would you would sign up with them, you would sign up with um So what what is a what does a Unilad deal look like? So you it's like 70% you and then the rest you know goes to them and all, you know what whatever you're So like they they set up monetization through their page and YouTube and then they cut you a commission check. Right, okay. and they share it. Like they they may share it to their page, which might have 17, 18 million followers. And then that's how it gets on on ESPN. That's how it gets on Snoop Dogg's page. Like they have I guess they have a pool to choose from. Like these videos. Um All right. What's your what's your highest viewed video to date? Uh the to believe it or not, it is a gun video, guns in two minutes. But I never got monet they would not monetize that video. Nobody would pick it up. Is that the one where you offer to come by and pick up anybody's gun? That yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was actually the biggest video I've ever had, man. But that's the craziest thing. It happened on my own. Like, it, it was just mine. Nobody picked that video up. Okay, so uh, a lot of co- what a lot of companies will do is they will, they will pick up that video and they will share that to all of their contacts, all of their right. sources. But the problem with that is as a creator – you don't always get that recognition. They don't. They don't say this is Jason Ward. That you know you're not get. Once you sign it over to them, it's their video. Right. Like I hate even I had a hard time. I got my own shit pulled down one time for resharing it just to my personal page because it was a content violation to me. So I they would take the the sounds and the video and all that and they they it would be put into the system and you know they would pop you for a copyright violation for that and i used to get that for my own videos like i don't do that anymore like once we have videos go or whatever we don't we don't take them to anybody but it was so new and fresh it was like man that's cool so we can't air that video here yeah. if we want to be a monetized channel. no yeah you, okay, you so can't we'll leave that yeah. video alone but the next the next highest rated video is what um Oh yeah, yeah. Don't one don't of the play, nerf, don't one play. of the nerf gun the videos. nerf videos were they were huge. Um, and where can where can our viewers find these? They're on a psych ward uh, YouTube channel. It's probably the YouTube easiest channel. way to, to look them up. Okay, it, it was. Well, we're gonna go ahead and show one of these nerf videos. Y'all take a look real quick. We'll be right back. And there you have it, folks. The man has made a name for himself shooting his wife with a dart with a Nerf gun in the butt around the house. Yeah. So that what was. What made you think, like, what? how did that come to be? 
I have always done stuff like that to Amy, and honest to God, man, those weren't they weren't made up. The the, the as it went on, like they, people kept wanting. It. That's why I quit doing them. Like people just wanted them. They but wanted the first them. the first ones weren't playing. No, the first ones that I put out were absolutely. <laughs> but how many times can you shoot somebody in the ass where they're still going to have that same reaction? Right. And I that's one thing with with the content that we've had with with Sling Blade. With the Nerf guns, and I know there's other pranks that you can do and all that, and we do have a lot of them on there. But as far as the Nerf, everybody keeps saying, or always asks, when are you going to shoot her with a Nerf gun? When are you going to shoot her with a Nerf gun? And it'll come back out at some point. But, you know, you can only do that so many times for so long. Did you like? Did you keep stepping the game up? Did you get like one of those Nerf blaster ten? Oh man, I thought. Like, oh god, I, I had a, I had them all. Like I, I had, see. yeah. Like I've I've got I've got all, every one of them. So fantastic. They're still in in storage somewhere. They'll come back out one day. So speaking of Amy, man, one of the things that I started this segment with was just telling people your your gift of presentation, and um, one thing that 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 appears to be completely genuine, not an act, not not for show, not for Facebook, not for social media is. The way you husband and father, oh, man. That uh, man, I, I you you truly uh, you lead there, and uh, even having raised five kids, I, I take stuff from your and Amy's posts every day, and you guys are so inspiring, and um, just uh, I, I just love I love the energy that your marriage and your family puts out in the universe. I there would be no me without her. Like whenever I say that it's that's genuine, God, I love that woman. Like she. Uh, she's uh, she's unbelievable like she's she's everything to me i've known her for you know, we've been together since we were kids like i don't know life without her like right. the, anything that i do you can rest assured that that she's behind it like she's she's there and she and I, you know we we get that that term power couple tossed around all the time well here's the thing dude i mean you see you see what you all put out into the universe you see it every day you just don't see it out of both partners Right. There's always a giver always and always a, a taker. Right. You it, both give. We you both, both give lift each and other I, up. And and that's the biggest thing, man. Like I the 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 shit that Amy's done and that she doesn't want to do, but she that just and she's she's done out of just putting herself out there, you know? Um, like getting up on stage at, at Silverado's and, and do, getting out of her comfort zone. Like it inspires me to, to do something better every single day and to see her do that. And, you know, what I was going to say is like a lot of people, they, they throw that term power couple around and you know, I'm, I'm fine with that. As long as people know that, you know, we're, we're not machine gun Kelly and Megan Fox or something like we have real daily struggles and real problems that come up that we have to work through we argue we're not perfect I, I try to put that out there on on the internet like to where it's not always a highlight reel and people do get to see both sides of that sometimes I mean obviously I'm not going to put out the the crazy personal stuff at all at once I mean we get pretty personal on there and it's not for everybody and but you know th there's a lot of real real stuff that goes on there and we, sure. we have our problems just I like think that's where else. we see the real you I mean, I, you're, I you're funny. Your 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 viral YouTube stuff is all funny, but I think we see the real you through you and your wife's posts. It's it's a beautiful thing. Um, tell me a little bit of the personal here. Was was Amy was Amy on board with with the the cannabis business up front? Yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Amy, we have always had a. a an idea and, and always looked at it as a medical sense. And, and it has it. So, I mean, gosh, me and Amy were, I, I don't know if I'll get her in trouble. We've been blazing since we were, <laughs> we, we were in, we were in uh, younger kids, but you know, obviously whenever I started driving the truck at Ingalls and all that kind of had to go away, but yeah, she has, she's always been on board with the business. Amy's more business minded than I am. I mean, Amy's a, she can tell you every little thing about a retail store, about how to sell sales. Like it's, I couldn't do it Preach. without her. I couldn't oh, do it well, without her, bro. I, I see. I see that. Like I see that you and, and Kristen a whole lot, like me and Amy. Like sure. you, you're out there. You're out front, but you're not. You, dude, she's, you. I she's ain't, the glue, man. I'm she's not the glue. doing like all the paperwork that goes yeah. into it and all the payroll. I, no, I'm not doing that not shit. Me, I told her the other day. I said, something happens to you. Like I don't know. Like I don't even know some of these passwords. <laughs> oh <laughs> man. Yeah, dude, I'd, I'd be lost. Oh, yeah, no. Something I'd, happened to Kristen. I, yeah. I might as well shut it down, or, yeah. or 
I don't know. It'd, it'd be it'd be a nightmare. Yeah, it's just an so, absolute nightmare. So, I mean, Amy, Amy Ward, if you're listening, uh, if something happens to Kristen, be ready to run both because <laughs> we're going to need you at both places. So. But, uh, all right, folks, we're going to take another short break and come back for our final segment. We got Jason Ward in the booth with Trinity Farms. He is a internet uh, phenomenon. He's had couple, several viral videos. Um, what's the highest viewed? Uh, well, the, like fifty I, million or something. Yeah, crazy? I would. I would say all together that would definitely be uh, the the probably the the Nerf gun. I would say I, it would have to be on my personal page. It was the gun video, like the um, the uh, guns one hundred and one in two minutes. That was the biggest I personally had, but. It's hard to tell because they've been, they're not just on my page. They've been pushed out so far. And, you know, I, like I don't, not here for the credit, but th- that credit or that those videos went to everybody else that I signed. Awesome. So. <laughs> All right. Well, we are going to take another short break. We'll be right back with Jason Ward. I'm Corey Short. This is Cosmic Kool Aid. We'll see you in a few. In 2023, lines will be crossed. Champions will be determined and legends will be made. HVW once again sets the stage for great professional wrestling in Western North Carolina, bringing the best talent together for the showdown series at Silverado's featuring TJ Boss, Jada Stone, Reno Royce, Luca Daniels, Marcus Eric's, Michael King. and King Enterprise. The bar and standard in professional wrestling has always been high in North Carolina. This year, High Velocity Wrestling takes that into the atmosphere. It's the Showdown Series at Silverado's. <laughs> And welcome back to Cosmic Kool-Aid. I'm Corey Short. In the booth with me tonight is Mr. Jason Ward of Trinity Farms and Internet Fame and so many other great things. He's yeah, great. that that fame work. I mean, 50 million views is 50 million views, bro, and that's just one video. Speaking of a lot of views, like I have a another good Silverado connection that I have made over the couple years. Um, well... Donnie Baker, you, you, you know, Donnie Baker's been, he's all over the internet. He is one of the funniest improv and characters that I have ever, that I've, that I've ever been around, never met. Like the, he was, I've been a fan of his forever. I've went to Greenville, South Carolina. I've went to his shows. And when you had him at Silverado's, um, last year, I had to kind of break in his, uh, his uh, green room and do a video with him. That turned into a friendship. What? Well, yeah, man. I've t- I got him on the phone right now, or on text right now. We're going to call him. All right, hold on. Before you call him, let, let's let's run this video real quick of you and Donnie at Silverado's, and then we'll give him a call. Right. Take a look. She jumped up from there and started hollering, what did you kill Jesse for? What did you kill Jesse for, yeah? Mm. Come to find out, I don't reckon she might care what Jesses are doing to her. I reckon that made me matter than what Jesse made me. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I killed Jesse for. I mm. first caught her on top of my mom, Phyllis, trying to do mission her like a pilgrim. Second and foremost, caught Jesse on top of Angel Skinner's. And if anybody's going to put a baby in her, it's me. So guess what? I kicked Jesse right in the karate artery. Ah, right, then. Mm-hmm. All right, folks, that was Donnie and Jason at Silverado's in the green room <laughs> when he was here with us last spring. So, let let me let me start out just by saying this guy is he's hilarious and he's one of the nicest people. I don't want to throw him under the bus with that because, you know, he's uh, he's Donnie Baker. But let's just call him. Let's just see what he's doing. I don't know how this call's being recorded. <laughs> Donnie Baker, what's up, buddy? Hey, oh, it's you guys. How you doing? Yeah, man, you're good. I can hit pause. Yeah, just this. take that off. We we don't need CIA or anything, Donnie. It's all good. Oh, I record all incoming calls. It's a good habit to get into. 
Because you never know, not just telemarketers, man. You know, the worst is getting that stupid callback or star 69 from an escort service. <laughs> sure, it makes sense on a Friday night, but that sort of cuts to the quick on Wednesday afternoon. I swear to God, especially if your mom Phyllis is near your phone and you're out weed whacking and she wants to know who Vonda is and what a half and half for 30 bucks is about. <laughs> Damn, I was just going to, like, I actually called to say you were, you know, just talk a little bit about you and how nice of a guy you were, but you're giving in a lot of details, Donnie. Oh, you know what? It's doing more than the Better Business Bureau has the last six years. I'll say it right to their face. There's so much government fat. It's all politics, man. How's that? You know, but I don't have to pick up the Wall Street Journal to tell you guys what the buzz is about. <laughs> I ain't going to be scammed by this again. You know what? If they want me to pay FICA out of my check, they can prove I owe FICA, whoever that even is. <laughs> so, no, man, I'm just, I'm wound up. You caught me at a good time, though, man. How's that, uh, so, like how's that said, I'll... neighbor of yours, Donnie? You whooped his ass yet? Oh, uh, Mitchell. Mitchell. You know what? Yeah, his house just got burgled. But, you know, that's another sign of the times. These millennials that are out now, Used to be if you burgled a house, you burgled it, you went and you tried to sell it, you burgled, you know, from burgling. Now, these, these kids got busted. They forgot, you know, how millennials are. They got in there. The Xbox was left on because he's got two small fries, about 14, 15 years old. They get in there, forget their burgling, start playing <laughs> Donkey Kong or whatever's on the Xbox, and don't even burgle what they're there to be burgling for. I swear to God. So they got vested for burgling and didn't even burgle. You know, so who Don, even Don, knows Don. if the next generation can even burgle their way to anything? Donnie, can we just talk about Kid Rock for a second? Like, yeah, I, I know that you, your letter to him finally got out and you were able to, to meet him. What, what was that like? You know what? A lot of people underestimate the power of writing a letter in Helvetica. I wrote it from the heart. And I made sure it got to him. And you know what? Something about I get first off, a lot of people think we're kin. And I get that a lot. I can't even walk, you know, in a circular fashion within a food court without hearing a whisper. You kind of look you like know, him. Oh, I swear to God, I do get that a lot, man. I do. It's starting, you know, I get that. And um, Jason Mimosas, if I go four or five days with, you know, a six day beard, I get Jason Mimosas. <laughs> I can see that. I get that a lot. I get. Thank you. I get Kid Rock. I get that dick from uh, Puddle of the Muds. I get so there's three or four at any one time. <laughs> you know, you think one minute I'm starting a movie, or is that the dick from Crying Stop? Somebody said that your hair and my hair was looking a lot alike with that WD-40 treatment you've been doing. Yeah, you, you should use WD-40. I was. I hate to pick on you, but you you're leaning a little more toward the Pantene side a little bit. I swear to God. Next thing you know, you're going to be like that chicken Hanson. I don't judge people. I, you know, like I say, good. You don't have split ends. You got good, healthy roots, man. That's great. You know. So, but what's that get you when you need a co-signer on a dune buggy? So Donnie, where where do you live? Are you in uh, where are you? South Carolina, Georgia? I'm in Dunedin, Florida. Speaking of dune buggies, if you go to a map and you finger a map and you head toward the lengths and you stop, it looks like it's spelled Dunedin. It ain't. It's pronounced Dun Eden, like I'm done eating this dinner. Or I'm done eating, done eating Angel what? Skinners. <laughs> Angel Skinners. There you go. <laughs> hey, I ain't bragging. I hooked up with her again. It's been a while. How long's that and been? I ain't bragging. Oh, over four years. Damn. But she comes around like cicadas, you know. And there she is. And we hooked up last weekend. I called her the gun range. And you hook up with Angel Skinners, you're going to need goggles and headgear because she's a squirter and a squealer. <laughs> and there ain't no seven-day waiting period on it neither. I swear <laughs> to God. She's in heat. If you catch her, she ain't on the bleed. <laughs> it's like fishing in a pay lake. You know you're going to catch something. Did I say that I was friends with that? I, I'm acquaintances with him. <laughs> oh, Donnie. Hell yeah, man. I mean, me and Jason, we, we go way back, man. Yeah. Like I, I said, I think we served some time in juvie together. I can't prove it. it you know? It was somewhere around there. I, I have followed you all over the place, like watching your shows. Or, they're good as hell. Do you have anything coming up? Cause I would love yeah, to man, I just, get you back at Silverado's. Like I, that's kind of why I I love to go back to Silverado's. I know I was there last time with fork pistols, but I got just in time for Valentine's. Say old lady ain't putting out regular. <laughs> you don't know, you know, why's come that is is because she's hit 
menopause. You don't know. Well, day four Valentine's, let Donnie Baker, the bastard maker, preheat the oven. I'm going to be Palm Harbor, Florida at Snappers Comedy Club. First time ever I've been there, not before Valentine's. On Valentine's, it's up to you. If you're going to put a baby in her, I can't be there to bleed the brakes for you. You got to do that yourself. You know, I got sperm eggs the size of tadpoles. Because if I do the job, she'll be doing a walk of shame leaking about a mile and a half worth of guppies back to the house. <laughs> Nobody wants that. She'll hop off the air mattress looking like she's making pancakes. I swear to God. <laughs> so I'll be at Palm Harbor, Florida, which is right by Dunedin. And it's real close to Clearwater. I'll be there on Monday, February 13th. Then after that, I'll go to Williamsport, where I should have been as a Little League All-Star back in circus 1986. And my coach wasn't a dick and pitched his kid over me when i was the only one on the team that had verified chest hair <laughs> damn that's a mouthful i know man it's all politics <laughs> you know name another 12 year old a lot of people especially the moms that stick for burt reynolds because when i was on the mound i could throw curveballs with both hands i was amphibious there's no pitch counts oh sorry uh step off you're at 14 pitches tristan yeah why don't you <laughs> make sure tristan. you go to the store and get a box of plugs while you're at it you know, I'd, I'd step on the mound. Yeah, I know this is a sore subject, but how's your Tommy John? Oh, I had Tommy John surgery on both knees. I had that twice. But you know what? I can still, to this day, I ain't bragging, but after nine years at Discount Karate, I could still scissor kick a hornet's nest and basically destroy the whole colony without even waking the queen. So, I, you know, I swear to God, I'm like a scalpel. You corner me like a skunk. If I hit your neck, I'll probably break your karate artery. Then what? You better hope there's a blood bank within 50, <laughs> 40 yards. Donnie, tell us what you got coming up in 2023. Anything new and exciting? I'm doing probably the longest tour I've ever done. Because Kid Rock did his longest tour last year. And I'm going to do the longest one I've ever done this year. I'm fresh out of rehab in Nashville. I've got a new liver. At least one that's basically got a new Cadillac converter on it. So I'm going to go out and see how it runs under stress. And I'm going to do, you name it, all the way from Altoona's, Pennsylvania, probably as far west as, well, Williamsport starting off. But I'll be everywhere. What's it like having uh, Kid Rock sloppy, sloppy seconds? <sighs> Man, I'll say it like this. You talk about somebody, like I always thought, you know, like, it must be nice on the tour bus, you know. And I was, you know, Patty Ferguson, like one time, she got tickets, and she got backstage with Creed, which he was bragging about two two weeks later. She came down with a stap infection. But you look at Kid Rock in terms of road beef on the road beef scale, I'd say outside of Elvis and maybe uh, maybe a dick from three doors down, there's probably fewer ever to tour this country and just harvest that much poon in one full swell swoop, you know? I swear <laughs> to God. It's like, damn, Bob <laughs> saves them for the rest of us, you know? Harvest I that much poon. <laughs> yeah, it's a word, way with words, man. Donnie, no kidding. thank you so much for, for coming on. And, I, you know, I appreciate our friendship. And I know you you value it, too. And uh, we'll just keep on keep on being friends, you know? I think we build each yeah, other Yeah, it ain't hard. No, it's not yeah, hard. Yeah, all we do is concentrate, you know, concentrate. <laughs> You know, it's like ball cards and kids. We swap, trade, collect them all. It ain't hard. Follow the instructions. Once in a while, you're going to get a rookie Jeters. Sometimes you get a Raleigh Fingers. <laughs> but every day is different. Corey, you know? you're probably just going to have to go to break, right. man. <laughs> yeah, just... yeah I, I suggest that too. Either that or do traffic and weather together. <laughs> do something productive. <laughs> I swear to God. Like we're waiting on NASDAQ. Donnie, thank you so much for coming on, man. We appreciate your time a bunch, thank dude. Thank you, guys, man. Keep rocking. Have a hey, great night. We'll see you soon. All right, I got I to go. Cassette. <laughs> man, that dude is something else. What the hell? Like, what did that come from? Uh, like, uh, where like did, I've never said that many verbs in. Where does he come up with this I have no idea, man. And it's like, it's, uh, it's off the but dome, too. When, when, and all joking aside, and that 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 shit right there, like, it just, 
How does it happen? I know he's got a bunch of one liners like loaded up in the in the and gun, it's ready to in go, the gun ready to go. But some of that stuff, man, he, he just right flies. off the dumb. What when, he responds to what you say, and it's so quick. Yeah. Well, that was the way it was whenever we were in the uh, green room, and I was like, "Hey, Donnie, can do one video, you know." And obviously, he was like, "Yeah, let's do it, whatever." But I just said, "I'll I'll jump into something, and you say whatever." Yeah. That's when I realized like that guy is the damn king of improv. And you know a lot of the the skits like that they kind of they 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 get old to me, like some of the the Larry the Cable guys and all that. But there's something about Donnie, man. He's just so. Have you have you sent a a Trinity Farms care package? To no, Donnie I've yet? not. I need to. I need to I need hell, to man? send send him something. I'll do that. I'll work on that. Shame on him, Donnie. Yeah, uh, I think he likes Ward Davis better. <laughs> Shit, we're gonna have to work on this. I got you. We're gonna get you some stuff, Donnie. We love you. Anyway, this is Cosmic Kool-Aid. I am Corey Short. This is Jason Ward. We will be back for one more segment. Stay tuned. folks welcome back to cosmic kool-aid i'm your host Corey short again if you're just joining us man you missed one hell of a show we got jason ward in the booth we've had mr ward davis call in we've had national comedian donnie baker call in and uh man we're just rolling here man we had a, what a great a episode time. it's been fun it's fun stuff that, you that, might, everything that has happened tonight is all it's all come from you man this is all silverado stuff and this is how valuable a sponsorship is to silverado's and just anything that Corey invests in, Corey is a he he's an opportunity maker. That's how I would describe Corey. Like he's going to put an opportunity out in front of you. You, it's up to you what you're going to do with it. And uh, thank you, brother, I man. No, that. it's it's the truth. Like it it's um, our connection. I, I don't think anything happens for you know by by accident. Uh, I'll tell you a quick little story about how this even all got started. It was uh, 2020. Um. We are, Amy and I went out to get something to eat. And back then you couldn't go any damn way to get something to eat. Like it was impossible. And you, you, you shut the whole world out from a guy like me that has to be out doing stuff. And then, you know, around people, that's a depressing ass time. Like it, that was, that sucked. It, it sucked really at was. our relation. Amy and I's relationship, it struggled more than it ever struggled. We, hell, we had to go to counseling for the first time ever. It just sucked. We're building a house, starting a business pretty much, and it just yeah. it, it just wasn't a good time. But we were going out to eat one night, and we were going to go to Pomodoro's right beside this little place called Social. I had never been in Social in my life. I don't know why. I, I don't know why we had never, never went in there, but um, Pomodoro's is closed just like everything else. The world's depressing. It's six feet apart all the time, everywhere. So... I look up and there's quite a few cars at the social. I'm like, what's going on over here? So we go up and I walk in and there is this guy picking a guitar, playing Waylon. And I hadn't heard live music in. <laughs> this was probably 2021. This was probably, but everything was opening back up to an extent. A little bit, yeah. Yeah, it was still opening back up. Like you, there were, you could go do stuff. People just weren't doing it. And then I, I walk in, and then there's there's Ricky Gunner. He's he's playing Waylon at the far end of the stage, and I'm like, damn, I teared up, man. Like it was like it was like, what the hell? Like this is what I needed. My heart needed it, and it uh, from then on. From Ricky to you, from, through Ricky, I met um, uh, Jennifer, 
that was kind of like that whole all connection was sure. right there, you sure. know, with, within within the four or five people that has pretty much altered my life as far as the course that it's on. Yeah. Like you know, if I would if we would wouldn't have went in social that night, this would have never happened. It would have never happened. So well, I'm so glad you did, man. Yeah, me too. So glad you did, and uh, you know, you 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 even before you joined up with us, you were sending me encouraging messages like, "Man, I love seeing those buses going," and you know, I want to be a part of that one day. And and man, I'm just I'm just yeah. so glad we we did this, and uh, um, I just just love having you around, man. You're just such a great vibe and great well, energy. It's, it's, it's likewise, man. Years to come, more, yeah, more I hope and more so. stuff. I hope so. I so uh. You uh, you got your concealed carry? No, I don't. And I could go into why, like I said, I don't want it. But I, I'm I'm on the conspiracy theory side. Sure. Of too much information is not good information. Right. And right. I just have all if North Carolina being a, a open carry state, I've always had this. You know, just keep it on the hip. I heard. I don't have to give them much. But anyway, I'm I'm not against anybody that does. Like Amy's wanting to get hers, and I'm for it. Cause she can put it in a purse. Yeah. Well, I, uh, weird ass people. I, I got mine because I, I, uh, you know, owning or having the liquor license and having the bars, you, you're the only one in the building allowed to have a gun. Mm-hmm. And I'm not the kind of guy to open carry, walk around with a gun on my, right. on my belt. So yeah, I don't do that either, um, but I know I can. But at the same time, you know, uh, the, the, this world is crazy, crazy, man, and, and, and somebody with some sense has got to be packing yeah. to offset the ones that ain't got no sense. Mm-hmm. That's the way I see it. I'm sure I'll catch heat in the comments for that, but it is what it is. And it's I, what I'm, it is. I'm going to stand on I'm that. Very sure. pro two A, pro cannabis, pro everything. It just live and let live and mind your fucking business. That's kind of my philosophy. On that, that uh, what's that Gerard Butler and Jamie Fox movie where? Gerard Butler gets revenge the whole movie. And Jamie Foxx's lawyer. Anyway, that opening scene, he watches his wife and daughter get raped and killed. Yeah. And that scene right there was what changed my entire yeah. position on. Yeah, I was never against gun ownership. I just didn't care. Right. I didn't, it, yeah, it you wasn't just on my didn't radar yeah. until I saw that movie. Yeah. Like, yeah, that that that's not gonna happen. I gotta I gotta change that. So yeah. well, yeah, I went in my concealed carry class this past week and uh, nice. Mm. Good for you. I might get there one day. I mean, I've just not. I have a lot of, a lot of pistols, a lot of guns, but I don't. I don't have that. But I do want Amy to get it, and I want Macy to get it whenever she's of age. Yeah. You uh, you, who are you pulling for in the Super Bowl? Oh God, just yeah. Eagles, man. I'm a I'm a Josh Michael fan. Like Same I here. love that guy, man. God, Same that's here. been one Josh of Josh is coming on the show here in a couple he? weeks. Yeah, it's one of my lifelong friends, man. And like if if Josh can see it. I, I need it to happen. I would love for it to happen for Josh. And I hate the Eagles, but I love Josh. <laughs> and I, I love a few Eagles fans. And Yeah. Uh, you know, fuck it. at this point, let's just keep it in the NFC East and go with it. I'm a college guy. You know that. I don't I don't have a dog in the fight. Usually whenever it's it's happening, I'm I'm pulling for players. Like I wanted uh, I wanted Jacksonville to do it. You know, we have ETN, we have uh, Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. And I I wanted to see that happen, but He'll get one. Oh, for I'm, sure. I always pull for the Tigers. Oh, for sure. Trevor Lawrence field. is a beast. All right. So speaking of Ricky, yeah. Last year, uh, you know, I, I know that he he made planted the seed for you all to meet Jennifer and Diamonds and Whiskey, um, and and your wife that helped uh, yeah, well, some cool stuff happen for that, her. Tell me about that. Like I said, I ever since I had met Ricky, I was a huge Ricky fan. I've I've kind of went to if he's been at any of your your venues, I've I've been there. And uh, I can't remember last year who he opened for, um, but he was playing. Jennifer Lauren from Diamonds and Whiskey was there to support him. They're good friends. So I, story has it like I, I she walked up to me. She wanted a picture. Said she was a huge fan of you know everything. She's gonna call bullshit on this. Actually, no. I went up to her. I did go up to her and I said, <laughs> "Hey, I uh, you know heard 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 you on saw you on the internet." And all that love, love what you do, and then actually Ray was there and he snapped a picture. So nobody really asked for a picture. That's a lot of controversy right there. But um, <laughs> Jennifer quickly became one of my favorite people that I have ever been around in my life. Um, I like real people, and I'm telling you, like that that she's legit. Like she is a not only a legit human but a badass. Talent. She's a fucking badass man, and yeah. she's just and, and and she's she is what she talks about. She is what she says. 
um, women back in women is kind of her whole, her mo- model in life. And to see her do what she did with my wife and her confidence and kind of, Amy is one of those people that she can, she can belt, man. You've, you've heard Amy sing. So, I mean, she's a singer, but she didn't ever feel worthy of doing that outside of church. It was just like something between her and God. She, she did her worship. She did it that way. And that's as far as that went. Sure. I have tried and tried and tried for 20 years to get this girl out singing outside of church for the public, because I've always been in, you know, the church ain't always in church. The church sometimes is outside of church. Well, and this and happened you, quickly because dude, at the beginning of last season, I was trying to push her up on the karaoke stage. Yeah, oh, you weren't going to get it, man. It wasn't happening. You're not getting she it. She went from that to playing the big so stage playing, in two months. And a uh, dude, so quick. So Jen, like, she there, one day, man, she just rolls up at the house. Like, she just comes, walks her ass up in there, and has you know, she has her her dolly. Uh, shirt on and all that and like she's like you're gonna sing you're gonna sing with me and damn if she wasn't singing <laughs> i'm talking tour bus and all within three months yeah man but yeah J- jen's awesome one of my one of my favorite people in the world she's just real i I love her to death and i'd love her because of what she's done for my wife and just everything she says she is. And I don't know that Amy will be ever be a touring singer. Amy likes Amy likes to be home. And I gotta I gotta support that. I mean sure. Amy will go she'll go your Silverado, stuff like that. But Jen will be up all night. Amy likes to be in bed. Well, and as we're seeing, you know, just behind the scenes of Silverados, man, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work. And so, I man, I don't know. That's one thing I've learned is this is a hard business. It's a hard ass business, not just for the performer, but for everybody involved. And it really is. I mean, we go, you know, oh, poor, pitiful, rich millionaire when they're, when they, man, they work their ass off Dude, and they're, they're away from their people all the time. All the time. And it is not an easy life. Yeah. And that money does come at a cost. Yes, it does. And it's just, um, just watching what Jen does and her hustle. Yeah. She'll be, oh, I'm headed to run into Nashville. Like you're running to Nashville. Like that's fucking six hours away. <laughs> yeah. Like you're not running. I mean, that's a day time right. thing, man. And then she's got her own shit. So just is, to watch uh, that hustle. That again, that is diamonds and whiskey, folks. You can find them on all the formats. They're a a, a big uh, country band out of the Charlotte area, and they tour nationally and have opened for every name in the book, and have played almost every festival in the book. And Jennifer is just a wonderful front lady for that band. Again, that's diamonds and whiskey. Check them out. Maybe we'll and, see uh, some more of uh, Amy being part of the the whiskey. Amy's not a diamond girl, but she's well, every once in a while whiskey. We'll jump, you know, even if just the regional stuff. It's so much fun. Like it's I, I I just and kudos to you, Jennifer, for opening up her spirit to that. Oh, dude, absolutely. Yes, it's, it's it's amazing. Like she's a, she's a true friend to Amy, and I. I mean, we got a lot of good friends, but that girl's a real one. Well, I know that everybody watching is, is enjoying seeing the videos and seeing Jennifer break her out of her shell. So yeah, kudos, sure. good stuff. So let's talk about one more subject before we wrap this thing up. Uh, tell me about, uh, your experience parenting teenage girls. Mine's crazy. <laughs> Dude, like it, who would have ever thought it happens before you know it. Like we went from, we went from princesses to friggin' diva. Are Overnight, you, are you man. dealing with boys yet? Oh yeah, I've been dealing with boys since Macy. Macy went boy crazy. I, I I knew the day I was in trouble when I took Macy to see the Justin Bieber movie. Yep. Excuse me. When we left that, it was just like it's it's over, man. My life's hell. I just want to say for the record, that's a great fucking movie. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good. It's I a mean, great I, documentary. Yeah, it really. I hated was. the kid until I watched that. Until you watched it, no, yeah. I love the kid. No, it was. <laughs> It, it was good, but that was the day that Macy went straight boy crazy. And Eva Valley, I don't know. She, Macy grew up at eight. You know, like I, after my dad died and, you know, they were so tight. Right. Macy had kind of, you know, she kind of, she kind of grew up overnight on me. But they're, they're good kids, man. I love them to death. And it's, uh, <laughs> it's crazy to say. I mean, she'll be a she, teen. Or a, is Macy setting the proper example for the younger one? Yeah, uh, no, probably not. Yeah, yeah mine, no, mine probably either. not behind the scenes. Like, uh, it, you know, I'm kind of wondering if Valley is going to be the hard one. Valley's always been so quiet and uh, quiet and just kind of yeah. done her own thing. But Macy turned out good. Like Macy had a Macy sucked from 
14 to 16, sometime around 16th and 17th year, she started, no, she started realizing that, that if you can't beat them, join them, that mentality with me. Right. And we, we developed a really good little relationship and she's, uh, I, I love them both, man. They're, they're my girls. I, hell, being a girl dad's different. It is. It is, man. I've got a, I've got a, a really quiet yet really mischievous one and mm-hmm. my older daughter. And then I've got the miss, you know, social butterfly, um, loud in my younger daughter, but she, she's not mischievous as long as she doesn't find Aubrey's mischievous path with that loud personality. Yeah. We'll probably be able to manage everything. I think we'll <laughs> right get now. through it, man. Like it doesn't feel like it, but golly, I mean, Macy will be an adult next year. They're Hardly. so boy crazy. Yeah. So boy crazy. Yeah. Um, and that, uh, that's an experience. Well, Macy's got a, a pretty, at this point, got a, a pretty serious boyfriend that they remind me a lot of me and Amy. Like that whole dynamic and that whole relationship. I'm like, mm. and I, what do I tell him? Like, I can't, it, he's about the same level I was at. I can give him advice, give her advice, but did you take it at that age? I didn't. So for me, being the father of teenage girls, it's really, you know, I had all these preconceived notions, bring out the shotgun, you put it, intimidate, you know, <laughs> yeah. all the stuff we see in movies. But in reality, man, if you're making my little girl smile, yeah, that's really, at this point, what it's all that's about. That's what you want. I'm that's... not going to be able to keep them from doing what humans do. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to, to keep her from doing what adults do. I just need her to smile. Yeah, that's that's what it's all about. And, and if I mean, she's if she's making her grades and and doing life and and she don't have a boyfriend that's got her coming home crying and sad and depressed, if she's smiling and happy, I think that's the universe telling me that it's okay. It's all right. It will. We will make it. And uh, yeah, Macy's on her own little path of her own, and she's had like what reason we're you know we're we're here for my videos and stuff. That girl, she she's had four or five mega viral TikToks just in her little existence. But, uh, yeah. Oh, she's I, already inherited the family no, tree. Well, I, I beat myself up a lot early on with that with, because I, I think it was – I took it a lot more seriously at, at some point in, in when all this happened. And I think it took away from a lot of my, my family time. It, and, you know, it might not look like that, but probably a fault of my own. Early on was kind of – you know, that was my life, like – you know, making these videos and she was trying to be successful, but I've always been very obsessive at over everything that I've done. Like I I'm all in or not. And looking back, I don't want, that's one thing I don't want Macy to, or my kids to see is I think what I don't want is I don't want my girls to, to get so caught up in this social media life and this content, 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 and, and not really see the, and miss the real parts of life, you know, instead of just making these, these videos. I mean, people take it so seriously now, man, this, this internet content creating and all that is like, that's all people think about. It's all these girls and these kids watch TikTok after TikTok. You're consumed with so much stuff. And I don't want to be that person that set the example early on. It's like, this is how you do this. You go, you go viral on the internet and lose focus of the real things, right. the real things in life. And I don't know. Maybe I already screwed up on some of that, but bro, we all do. Um, I mean, we all do every day. Uh, you know, I, I, it, workaholism is a real thing. It's a Being real passionate thing. about things is a real thing, and um, you know, we 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 try to justify some of it with what we're doing for our family, but it it's hard. It is, man. It's like hard. you 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 sit down at night and you're like, okay, what did I do? What could I have done better? How do I be a better better husband. And that's what, that was probably my fault earlier on in life in my thirties was getting so caught up in every little hobby or every little thing that I'd done that I would do that I would, I would, I would, it would take away from my family and our family time. But God, it just, like I've, I've just always had this obsessive compulsive at everything I'm into. If I'm into fishing, I'm going fit. If I'm golfing, I'm golfing 36 holes a day. Like, and that's the same with work. Whenever it carries into that, does uh does your your cannabis does Trinity Farms work 
make you happy? Do you see you're doing it forever? Yeah, yeah. I mean, as long as the you know, like I say, as long as the the laws stay the same, and uh, it will have something to do with with that field. That's what I'm very passionate about. Well, Jason, thank you so much for coming on the show tonight, man. You've been a wonderful guest. You, Ward Davis and Donnie Baker on <laughs> earlier, uh, funny guys, both of them, and super thankful they were on here with us. They will both be in studio at some point. Yeah, with we'll us. get them in here, man. And we wouldn't have them here without you, Jason. Of course, so. Well, uh, more fun episodes coming in the near future with uh, Jason Ward. You can find him at his store, Trinity Farms in Black Mountain, selling all the best cannabis legal products. Uh, you can find him on his YouTube channel at Psych Ward, where he's got multiple <laughs> viral videos, Facebook, all the yeah. formats. He's got a bazillion followers and a bazillion reasons to be following him. He's a funny guy, a great member of the community, and a good friend. Should I flip my hair after all that? Thank you, buddy. Nice. Cheers, buddy. No, Cheers. thank you. Seriously. So I'm only here because of you. Cheers tonight. to a great podcast, man. Yeah, thank man. you for that. Uh, was a good one. That, that was, was a good one. <laughs> all right, folks. I'm Corey Short. This is Jason Ward, and we'll see you next time.